Eric Tov, Chavri, I'm Stephen Benun. You're watching Israeli News Live. We have breaking news yet again. The title of our broadcast this evening, Who Will the U.S. Blame for the Next Gas Attack? You heard it right, guys. It's another threat of a gas attack, only this time on the eastern Ukraine uh, civilians that is being planned. The U.S., or excuse me, the, the uh, Ukrainian government, there has been a leak that there may be, a, uh, there is a, uh, an attack being planned on eastern Ukrainians along with their fighters that are there. Okay, so I'm, I'm going to, before we get into that, guys, I want to share with you something that's very important. So many times when we come on our broadcast here, some people have the misunderstanding. They think, well, gosh, you're just, you're pro-Russian. No, we are pro-truth is what we're pro. We're not pro-Russian. Uh, I am very much an American. Love my country with all of my heart. In fact, if I lived in America and I was doing our broadcast right now tonight, the broadcast I'm about to share with you, I probably would, it would be different. I probably would just be pointing out the propaganda that we're fed in the United States, looking at Vladimir Putin as the evil villain, and he's the guy that's causing all the trouble in the world, and we need to take down Russia. That would probably be my type of report because I'd be looking at the media bias that we're only getting. The only thing that we're being fed. Well, unfortunately, a lot of what we're being told is nothing but lies. And this is what I'm trying to bring out. Not that we're anti-American, but I'm anti-Obama administration. I'm anti-Hillary Clinton, Bill Clinton, all of it. Because we've been fed lies. Even with George Bush, there were things that he lied to us about as well. Just, And we're not even going to go into that issue here tonight. But I need to show you just how bad we're being lied to and what causes us to have a fuel hatred. As American people, our hatred is being fueled by anti-Russian propaganda, which a lot of it is garbage. Okay, I'm not saying that Putin doesn't have his flaws or that Russia doesn't have their flaws. Would I want to live under communism? Absolutely not. I prefer a democracy. But the thing is, is we see that even with Donald Trump, he is clearly speaking about he can work out a peace agreement with Putin and we could live in peace. And I'm not saying I am a Trump supporter. I'm only showing that you can use common sense. You don't have to just plan on going to war with everyone. But let's take a look. I want to share with you. This is called the Daily Vertical, and it was actually shared on uh, Jeffrey Pyatt. He is the U.S. ambassador to Ukraine, works at the embassy or the consulate, whatever you want to call him, but he is, the, he is that ambassador to the Ukrainian government. In fact, when we reported in the news yesterday, when we were showing you the tanks that Russia had sent in, and already you had seen the tanks where Ukraine had sent to the contact line, we knew tensions were escalating and getting out of control. Well, we saw that Jeffrey Pyatt, who had just came back into Ukraine, was flying to a little uh, province there near the contact line. So he knows that there is trouble on the horizon. And of course, Russia is the one being thrown under the bus. And now you're going to see exactly the kind of propaganda that we are fed in the United States and supposed to believe it. Listen here to the daily vertical that Mr. Jeffrey Pyatt shared on his Twitter today, and you will see what I'm saying after I share with you the true details. Let's listen to him. Hi there, I'm Brian Whitmore, host of the Power Vertical. Hi, Podcast. Brian. This is the Daily Vertical. Well, it turns out that July wasn't just the deadliest month in a year for Ukrainian soldiers. Not, According yes. According to statistics released this week by the United Nations, it was also the deadliest month in a year for Ukrainian civilians as well. The deadliest the month for Ukrainian citizens. In July, according to the UN. And June wasn't much better, when 12 were killed and 57 wounded. So in case anybody hasn't noticed that yet, you can pretty much stick a fork in the mid ceasefire agreement because it's done. The conflict in the Donbass is shaping up to be a war without end. It's really? a war without end because Vladimir Putin's regime is not going to accept any settlement that does not give Russia a de facto veto over Ukraine's future political direction. Okay, did you guys just hear what he said? In case you did not hear, he said it was the highest death toll for Ukrainian soldiers in the month of July. All right? I will agree with Mr. Whitmore. 
I don't doubt his statistics on this. I believe that he's probably telling us the truth about that. But then he mentioned that it was also the highest civilian for the Ukrainian civilians, it was the highest death toll for them as well. And he said as many as 12 civilians died in July alone. And he mentions June statistics as well. But here's where the propaganda comes in, guys. He's quoting the United, uh, the UN's uh, statistics as they're covering the conflict. Now, did 12 Ukrainian citizens actually die in July? Yes, they did. But there's an interesting fact that he leaves out. Who killed those 12 civilians? And who really are they? Well, here is the UN report that he's quoting. UN rings alarm bells on record number of civilian casualties in Eastern Ukraine, the Russian Ukrainians. I'm surprised he even cared about them. Well, if you can kind of make it sound like it's Western Ukrainians and it's Western Ukrainian civilians and that everything is being blamed on Russia, well, then that can sound pretty doggone good, right? Anyway, neither Ukraine forces nor the armed groups are taking necessary precautions to protect civilians. UN High Commissioner for Civilian Casualties figures in eastern Ukraine have risen dramatically in the past two months, the UN High Commissioner for Human Rights, Ziad Rod al Hassani, warned on Wednesday, calling on all parties to the conflict to prioritize the protection of civilians, take urgent steps to de-escalate the increased tense situation on the contact line. The Human Rights Office documented 69 civilian casualties in eastern Ukraine. In where? Eastern Ukraine in June 2016, including what? 12 dead and 57 injured. This was nearly double the figure in May. So yes, he is right in his statistics, but he lied to you or he misled you to believe that this was the Western Ukrainians, not the people that love Russia, that, are, that know that Russia is there keeping the Ukrainian government, the Kiev government from coming in there and slaughtering everybody. Guys, we shared with you here on Israeli News Live. And you have to understand, I'm passionate about this. You know why I'm passionate about this? Because as a Jewish believer, I saw how Germany came in, a Nazi government, a nationalistic government, and slaughtered the Jews. Not just Jews, they killed a lot of other people. They killed a lot of Russians as well. All right, so I'm not pro-Putin, I am pro-American, but I see what the Obama administration has done. I know that Hillary had a lot to do with more issues and we're gonna get into it in this broadcast tonight, but that's the type propaganda guys that were being fed in the United States. That's what fuels the hatred towards Putin because it makes it look like this is all of Putin's fault. We've showed you how that Western Ukraine has done nothing but bomb civilian houses in eastern Ukraine. You know, so the deaths, those 12 deaths, he didn't bother to tell you, oh, that was the Ukrainian army bombing the mess out of those civilians, did he? No, he didn't bother to tell you that. He doesn't also bother to tell you who's the first one to bring all those tanks to the front line. No, they just blame it on Russia. Exactly. Well, you know, that's why I say, you know, Putin has been trying to warn even Western media as we bring out Alex Jones. You guys may not like him. You may like him. I don't care which way. The point is, at least he has the decency to show you that Putin is trying to warn Western media that our own government, the Obama administration, is about to plunge us into a war. And if, and if Obama doesn't do a good job, Hillary will finish the job. So let's look at what's really going on, guys. All right, now, Turkonoy, Secretary of National Security of Ukraine. That's the guy pictured there. It almost looks like he's got a mug shot. I know he's standing by a door, but it doesn't look like the little dotted lines. It looks like he should be in prison. Anyway, this guy here on Twitter, Mr. Stormbringer, at Stormbringer 15, 15 hours ago, which may be about 16 since I actually copied this, breaking NAF intel reports Ukraine can use aviation and chemical weapons to capture, the Don to capture Donetsk. Donetsk is where the what? The Eastern Ukraines all live. 
I guess people forgot that they made the Ukrainian people, civilians, this was the Ukraine soldiers, eat glass and swallow it. I've seen the footage of the video itself where they took it with their cell phones. So you think that this Ukraine pro-Nazi government is really that great? I know that there's a conflict. You have to understand, my father-in-law is a Ukrainian. And he's not the pro-Russian Ukrainian. He's the Ukrainian from the side that's supposed to be the good guys. But he has a compassion for the Russian side because he does know as well that we're being lied to. All right? General staff of Ukraine is developing a military operation on the territory of Donetsk involving aircraft with the use of airstrikes and chemical weapons. The bloody pastor, as they call him, uh, Turkonoy is behind this special operation. I actually had a more damning document that backed this up. I made the mistake, though, of clicking on following the guy that posted it and sent him a private message. He quickly blocked me. I think he was more pro-West Ukraine and didn't want no one to see it. I think it was actually being sent for a reason for some purpose, but they wanted to make sure I didn't get this out to the public. So that one I got blocked from, but this one here I didn't get blocked from, so the tweet still remained in my box, and I was able to copy this one instead of it getting deleted. Now, here comes the other issues. Let's look at the Syrian gas issue altogether. Remember here, Syrian chemical attack. What do we know? This was September 24th, 2013. All right, and I forget which magazine I use or which uh, news article I use this off of right here. Maybe, oh gosh, I don't even know which one it was now. I, I'm sorry, uh, Reuters, I'm sorry. Reuters actually published this article here on the 24th uh, uh, regarding the 21st of August uh, sarin gas attack. A team of UN chemical weapons inspectors have confirmed that the nerve agent sarin was used in the attack on Gota agri agricultural belt around Damascus on the morning of August the 21st. UN Secretary General Ban Ki-moon told the UN General Council that he believed the attack constituted a war crime. The UN report, he said, detailed the most significant confirmed use of chemical weapons against civilians since Saddam Hussein used them in Halabaya in 1988. What happened? Oh my gosh, it was Syria chemical attack and they blamed who? Bashar al-Assad, the great villain. You know, and we all believed it. I, I believed it too. I honestly believe that Bashar al-Assad gassed his own people. And when I saw the th report, I was horrified to think that he was gassing his own people. Why? Because there was a civil war going on and Bashar al-Assad had to get control of his people. No. Bashar al-Assad never gassed his own people. Now, here, this report here, listen to this here. This here, uh, Aaron, er Erdem, uh, Aaron Erdem, I think is his name, he was the MP, Turkish MP, that was brave enough to first spill the beans on this. I don't think he's really the first, but he had the best smoking gun that blamed the, 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 the certain Western powers, indicting them. And they were using the attack to blame it on Syria. Listen to the Turkish report. Members of Parliament claim that deadly sarin gas was delivered from Turkish territory to Islamic State fighters in Syria in 2013. They say that officials knew about the deliveries, but that the case was closed. The MP say that they have evidence to back up the allegation and that they have presented. One MP Parliament was willing to testify, and that was er, uh, Aaron Aaron Erdem. <laughs> Only Sir, detained. Another public prosecutor was assigned, and all the detainees were released. They left Turkey, crossing the Syrian border. Isn't that interesting? They had him. And if you go, you can look up Aaron Erdem. Uh, his name is spelled 
E-R-E-N, his last name E-R-D-E-M, look it up, RT News carried the special report, he was indicted by Erdogan, even though he is a, an MP part of the government, a politician there, but he was also, an, I guess, an attorney. They were trying these guys. These were ISIS members smuggling this gas through there, but the Turkish government was allowing it. Why? Because the United States is who he implicates in the, in the interviews. It was the U.S. that was helping get that done because he said it was very odd how that, that same attack happens right after the time we were trying to indict these guys for bringing this deadly gas through the country but they were just allowed to go in there and then they mixed it and he says that the components came from Europe well he's not the only guy to indict Western powers Seymour Hirsch says Hillary approved sending Libya sarin to Syrian rebels Hillary Clinton the great investigative journalist Seymour Hirsch in two previous articles in the London Review of Books, Who's, who's Saren? And the Red Line and the Rat Line. He has reported that the Obama administration falsely blamed the government of Syria's Bashar al-Assad for the sarin gas attack that Obama was trying to use an excuse to invade Syria. And Hirsch pointed to a report from British intelligence saying that the sarin that was used didn't come from Assad's stockpiles. Hirsch also said that a secret agreement in 2012 was reached between the Obama administration and leaders of Turkey, Saudi Arabia, and Qatar to set up a sarin gas attack and blame it on Assad so that the U.S. could invade and overthrow Assad. By the terms of the agreement, funding came from Turkey as well as Saudi Arabia and Qatar. The CIA with the support of the MI6, was responsible for getting arms from Gaddafi's arsenal into Syria. Hirsch didn't say whether these arms included the, the uh, precursors of chemicals for making sarin, which were stockpiled in Libya, but there have been multiple independent reports that Libya's Gaddafi possessed such stockpiles and also that the U.S. consulate in Benghazi, Libya, was operating a rat line for Gaddafi's captured weapons in Syria through Turkey. So, Hirsch isn't the only reporter who has been covering the, the indeed, the investigative journalist Christopher Lehman headed uh, headlined on October 7, 2013, top U.S. Saudi officials responsible for chemical weapons in Syria and, and reported on the basis of a very different sources than Hirsch used. And it goes on and tells you more in the article. As you can see, Mr. Hirsch there, Seymour Hirsch there in the, in the photograph here speaking about his book. Guys, the point is, is that the U.S. has got the smoking gun. So if they're talking about that they're planning the Ukrainians who, by the way, at least Russia has accused the United States CIA of, in their documentary that, that, that they did, The Way Back Home, that was the name of the documentary, you can look it up, it is a powerful documentary where Russia indicts the United States with its own intelligence that it has of what they were seeing that was going on and how the U.S. was very much behind the toppling of Ukraine. So when people try to say, oh, it was Russia that was coming into Ukraine and so the U.S. came in there. No, Russia came in after the CIA was toppling the Ukrainian government. And as we're seeing here already, even from independent journalists that are investigative journalists, that the United States has been lying to the American people. Well, we even look at Benghazi right here. Maybe this is why we have the problem in Benghazi. They had to cover up some loose ends there so that Hillary Clinton wouldn't end up in a bad situation with this later when she runs for president. Very interesting, isn't it? Well, it doesn't end there. Now, Aleppo gas attack by U.S. Uh, by the U.S. backed rebels. We just had this attack. Now, this was not sarin gas, but chlorine gas. And this just happened the other day. And it is, they're being called out. It is the U.S. backed, quote unquote, moderate rebels that the U.S. has told Russia, do not bomb them. They're okay. They're the good guys. Well, they're trying to topple Bashar al-Assad. So that's what kind of good guys they are. 
Why is it that our government, who has been so adamantly against using of chemical weapons and even invaded Iraq over chemical weapons, ends up being the very country that's backing the use of them? Now, it's not the Americans and it's not the American people, guys. This is the Obama administration and Hillary Clinton is only going to make sure the rest of it is carried out. And they're planning on doing this to those poor Russian people. Oh, and the guy there on his little report, oh gosh, don't forget him, you know, he says that, uh, oh well, you know, uh, we had our Ukrainian civilians, the highest death toll ever. No, the Russians in eastern Ukraine, yes, they are true Ukrainian citizens. They're the ones that died at the hand of Ukrainian soldiers, not at the hands of Russian soldiers. Not at the, and, and I say Russian soldiers, I, hey, Putin can say he doesn't have soldiers there. I do believe that he has some in there, just like the United States also has soldiers in there fighting alongside of Ukrainian soldiers. They have too many reports, and I've seen the video footage of American soldiers with perfect American accents speaking, using, using the same AK-47s that all the other Ukrainians use. So yes, both pot and kettle are both black and they both can't call each other names. They're both guilty of that. But then again, what do you expect? They both have their own agenda. Russia is fighting a proxy war with America and America is using Ukraine soldiers and Russia is using uh, the Eastern Ukraines and they're both backing one another. If Russia wanted to take Ukraine guys, they'd already been taken. But then again, if Russia does that, then the U.S. is also going to hit back hard too. That's why the U.S. is putting all the troops that they are. Now, Let's go back. July the 8th of 2016, Israeli News Live reports Ukraine sends tanks to the contact line. We were the one that really helped bring this story to the front line. I put our actual YouTube video up there so you could see the date. It's on the screen. And that was the video, guys, that, that we shared with you. This is the one that we brought out. This is where Ukraine on July the 8th is sending all these tanks to the contact line near the Donetsk region, Donbass, uh, the city of Donbass. And this is about 40 tanks that came to this front line. All right? So we brought this out. We shared it with the world. We're trying to get this knowledge out there. Why? You know, not to make America look bad, but to get somebody to wake up and say to our government, wait a minute, we don't need a war with Russia. You know, there could be peace. And maybe, maybe uh, Mr. Trump is the guy that could help bring peace. He seems to have a little bit more level head when it comes to dealing with Vladimir Putin. You know, maybe they do need to respect one another and stuff. So anyway, we go from there. Then what do we have here on July the 19th, Ukraine News Reports. Now this is Ukraine's information agency. This is their Intel News Report, July 19th. Now I reported mine July the 8th, but the video came out the day before, July the 7th. All right, so on July 19th, now we've had, how many days went by? 10 days, 11 days? And in between that time, Russia is crying out to the U.S. and the reporters, you need to talk to your government because it's destabilizing the area. So Putin, is he's got to do something to protect those eastern Ukrainians. So now Russia deploys more grad tanks in Donbass by rail, Intel tells them. Ukraine military intelligence has spotted more than 30 flat cars with tanks and grads, multiple rocket missile systems being deployed from Russia and East Ukraine. Yes, why? Because of what you did here. Russia's doing it because Ukraine sent 40 tanks there to the contact line. OSCE reported all the soldier movements, but they didn't report the tanks. Why? Because they didn't see it. And, they, and it even said in here on the article, they wouldn't allow the OSC people in there to see what was going on, what Ukrainians were actually doing. So the Ukrainians incited this movement by Russia, and Russia sent more tanks to help with the Eastern Ukraines. And I've seen, even PBS guys did a documentary. The US news channel, PBS, does a documentary. You don't see a bunch of Russian soldiers there. You don't see all this stuff that everybody's claiming that is there. But does Russia send some of their older tanks in to help them out? Sure they do. Can you blame them? 
And then, of course, we broke this yesterday. This here being the very video where those tanks had arrived on the 19th, according to Ukraine intelligence. Now those, those tanks are no longer on the flat cars. Now they were actually on the streets. Now they're moving forward, preparing for a battle. Now, I forgot to put this up on my news broadcast this evening, but the, the head of the uh, Donetsk region there, the leader of this people here in a news broadcast has said, pretty much like that one guy said in his false news there, it's over. He said, we can no longer, he said, it, the, the constant attacks on our people never stops. And I do see both reports on both sides. The Ukrainians say that they're being shelled. The East Ukrainians are saying, no, Ukrainians are shelling us. Now they're both fighting back. I see that clearly. And you see video after video after video after video of the Eastern Ukrainians showing the bombs and stuff being lobbed on them. Now, again, it's not the only time that it's been reported in the news that there may be a gas attack on those Eastern Ukrainians. This here is reported on International Business Times. It is from 2015, back in May of last year, but says Ukraine, U.S., uh, US plotting to use chemical weapons against Donsk rebels, Russian media claims. Ukraine and the U.S. But as I've showed you in this broadcast, the U.S. has been guilty of it before. Now, not the U.S. people, but that Obama administration under Secretary Hillary Clinton. It is a tragedy, guys. And so, when you get this guy right here feeding you the lies, well, I don't want to say he's lying. He is telling the truth. He's just leaving out the critical details that the Ukrainian soldiers were killing the Ukrainian citizens. But it didn't really matter because they were East Ukraine citizens. That's the sad part. The UN document right there beside his own words condemning him. And of course, Mr. Stormbringer saying that NAF intel reports Ukraine can use aviation and chemical weapons to capture Donetsk. You know, they really just don't care about the Russian people. You need to watch The Way Back Home, the Russian documentary. He actually uses, if I remember right, they actually use CIA, where the CIA is talking on the telephone and what they think about the, those people living in East Ukraine. They wanted to nuke them. So as far as chemical weapons, they don't care about the East Ukraines. So why does this guy here even bother? Why does he even bother the guy with the daily vertical? Why does he even care about those Eastern Ukraines? Because he made you believe it wasn't Eastern Ukraines. He made you believe it was just good old Ukrainian citizens killed by Russians. You notice how he just left that part out. That's good propaganda. He did a good job. I give him credit. Very good job. I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. Very serious situation. Very serious world we're living in. And guys, I, I, I am seeing more and more, because of where we're at, we're able to see things that a lot of times are kept back from the U.S. They block our stuff in America as well, guys. You have to face the facts. It does have. They block stuff here. There's things I can't get either. We're just being fed propaganda. And it is on both sides. I know it is. But I do believe that Vladimir Putin has been thrown under the bus in this case. There's a lot of blood guilt on the Obama administration with Hillary at, at Obama's side. I'm Stephen Bonin. You're watching Israeli News Live.